Hot polluted oxygen vent tamer. What is this and how does this work? My name is Luma and let me explain what I did here, here and to the right side here. You might have seen my hot polluted oxygen vent tamer but don't know how it works. So let's start with the basic function. The hot polluted oxygen vent tamer is erupting at 500 degrees celsius. The heat will be transferred to the two liquids that the geyser is partly submerged in. That heat then will be transferred to the metal tiles. Transferring the heat to the steam room where the steam turbine will activate as soon as the room hits 125 degrees celsius. Which will then slowly use the heat and convert it to electric energy. Cooling down the room to the left and some pipes that run through the steam room. The steam turbine itself is of course self-cooled, needing no external cooling power. Now we come to the important part. As soon as the room here to the left reaches a certain pressure level, the deodorizers will activate. This is the point where we use a feature that is inherent to the deodorizers. We can't just have them like this because the polluted oxygen will overpower the deodorizers pretty quickly. If we try this again but with a lot more deodorizers and a setup like this, it will still get overpowered. So the next level would be to drop some water on top of them in order to stop the polluted oxygen from passing through. But as you can see the water will get pushed to the sides, giving some polluted oxygen pockets the chance to pass through. The improved version of this uses mesh tiles filled with water keeping the gases in place while still being able to reach for the polluted oxygen and turn it into clean oxygen above the water layer. And now to the version that I am using, two layers of liquid. It is cheap, evens out the temperature better and should be even safer than just one layer of liquid, separating the clean oxygen from the polluted oxygen. Be aware though that given time and without automation you will create a vacuum in the lower chamber. And we should try to avoid that. The reason that we don't want a vacuum down here is the possibility of the deodorizers placing a clean oxygen tile down in this room, negating the whole purpose of that build. Here in the background you can see me trying to make this happen, create a vacuum and accidentally get a clean pocket of oxygen down there, but even after several tries that did not happen. So I will be simulating this by dropping in an oxygen pocket. The reduced polluted oxygen pressure can't hold back the clean oxygen, which would lead to our system here breaking, because a layer of clean oxygen would form on the top and the deodorizers wouldn't be able to reach the polluted oxygen anymore, meaning you would have to open this room, let it out and then close it up again. So now that you know the mechanic behind the deodorizers, the rest is pretty simple. In this version here to the right, the vent will spit out its polluted hot oxygen until the room reaches a certain pressure limit, in our case 2 kilograms per tile. Then the automation will kick in and activate our deodorizers like you've seen just now. Now the oxygen will be transported from the lower room to the upper room, where as soon as the pressure is high enough, the pumps will activate, suck up the oxygen and transport it through some radiant pipes into the steam chamber area of our build. This will cool down the clean oxygen to around 125 degrees celsius and then you can pipe it to wherever you want to have it. This infinite storage symbolizes an atmosuit dock for example. If you actually want to pump it into an infinite storage, be sure to use crude oil or some other heat resistant liquid. I even managed to squeeze in a thermal sensor set to 125 degrees celsius so I don't have to see the red symbol of the steam turbine. The conveyor receptacle and the conveyor receiver also fit right in. No external cooling needed. They still need to be made from steel though. Another important part for this build is the thermal conductivity. The hot polluted oxygen is thermally connected to the crude oil, then to the petroleum which is in connection with the temp shift plate behind the auto sweeper, another temp shift plate that is connected to the first diamond window tile and that tile is connected to the steam or water depending on the aggregate state in the steam room. Everything here is one big temperature unit, except for the steam turbine that is slightly less hot than the rest. Since it is passively cooled, the steam turbine just has to be under 100 degrees celsius, which it is at the moment. The sand that you need to refill the deodorizers will come from the top, but you can place your conveyor rails however you like it. Technically you don't even need a conveyor automation for that at all. You can just have it manually delivered to two storage bins that you can place to the left and to the right of the contraption. In this setup the auto sweeper can just reach diagonally and grab what it needs from the storage bins. The cycle sensor here just tells the auto sweeper how often it is allowed to refill the deodorizers. I had it at around 5 to 10 percent per cycle but you can also have it activated the whole cycle. This version here and this version here are the more aesthetically pleasing and how I would use them in a regular game. This is the one layer liquid version and the other one is the double layer liquid version. Both of them work perfectly fine. 
Both of the atmo sensors are set to 2 because we don't want to draw a vacuum. They are connected to an end gate which is able to activate our deodorizers. The auto sweeper can be controlled by a cycle sensor but doesn't have to. The atmo sensor here is set to 4 kilograms and controls the gas pumps. The pumps, the auto sweeper and the conveyor loader in the top chamber need to be made out of steel. You can either deliver the sand via the conveyor receptacle or manually like in the build shown before. You basically just have to check where the auto sweeper can reach and place two storage bins in these spots. Then you can set one of them to collect the clay and the other one to store the sand that you need to refill the deodorizers. The gas can be transported either one of two ways. Either you directly send it out or you pipe it through all of the rooms first. But this time the short way is actually the better way. Because the upper room is actually even colder than 125 degrees celsius since the incoming material can also cool down the room. We have 96 degrees up here which we would get using the short way but with the long way we get 114 degrees celsius. As you may have already imagined the sand for the deodorizers comes from somewhere in your base as symbolized by this auto sweeper and conveyor loader but as i already mentioned you can also have this manual delivered and now we can just go through the overlays the oxygen overlay the power cables yes please hook this up to your main grid otherwise this will not work the temperature overlay the liquids used the gas overlay liquid piping version 1 and version 2 of the gas piping and the decorges for the giggles automation with the settings of 2 kilogram 2 kilogram whatever you want to set it here 125 and 4 kilogram and this is where our sand comes from and our clay goes to. By the way, if you want to know how long this video has been lying around, check out this next segment here. If you like this building I've shown you, or maybe this building, or any other version that I might have tried out here on this planet, then go ahead and help me reach the 5k.